G'day viewers, welcome to Redditch on the Cross City Line. In front of us is a 323 electric multiple unit. Let's go learn how to drive. We we'll just pop in here. I'll leave that door open for the moment because there's something else I want to show you. Jump in the big pink chair. First things first, master switch on. And then we pull our reverser into the forward position and that'll let us open the doors. Now you can use your normal keyboard or controller controls to open your doors if you want, or you can put in your door key and press door release. So let's go and show you the other feature I was talking about as all these people jump out here. We're gonna wander down to this car with the pantograph on it. And just mingle in amongst these people because we're gonna jump in here because we've got guard panel. So you can pop your door in, you can close the doors. So this just closes yours, or you can close them all. And we can open, just wait for the others to close. We can open them all. That's opened ours. Let's have a quick look. Yep. So we've made sure the station's clear. Let's open the others. There they go. Alright, so let's close all of our doors now. So you imagine the fun you could have with this with an AI train. Hmm. Signal our driver that it's ready to go. Pull our key out. And shut the panel. All right, let's jump back in the cab. Just use our quick shortcut there. Now, some other things that we might want to turn on. AWS and Vigilance are two safety systems. Let's just get this door closed while we're here. And let's reset the howler. Now, if you're stopped in a station with a red signal, you should set DRA because it interlocks and it stops you driving the train. Now, other things you can have, there's train stop override if you need it. You can turn on your cab air conditioner if you want to. There's always an air circulation fan running, which is what you can hear. Turn your cab lights on and off. You can turn on your windscreen wipers if you want to. There they go. You can turn on the little cab fan here. And you can open your vents or go to heat or whatever. There's couple and uncouple buttons. You'll be instructed when to use those as appropriate in the services and the scenarios. This is GSMR I've just turned on. You're probably used to using the phone handsets by selecting them or clicking on them to, uh, there's our vigilance, we'll have to acknowledge that. Vigilance goes off every now and again to make sure that you're actually awake. So back to GSMR, you are probably used to using the handsets to talk to the signaler. Now you use the SG button and it'll send off to the signaler and you'll get a response back. There you go. Horn down here. It's a nice meaty horn. Now our doors are already closed, but if you wanted to, you can use your buttons on the panels over here. This thing down here is called the master controller and we're currently in brake three. So let's pull this back to the off position and you can see that the interlock's gone white on the HUD, which means we can power. So P1 for a nice gentle start. P2 as you start getting some motion. And when you need more power, P3 and P4. Now this route does have a lot of low adhesion areas. And we'll just throttle that back now. We'll go back to the off position to cruise out of here. And we'll try and keep an eye on our speed as we're driving along. Headlights are set over here. They're normally set up correctly depending on the time of day when you get in, but you can adjust them if you want to and you can set your tail lights. Tail lights for the back are down the back as well. You can, if you need to, drop your pantograph or pick it back up again. And you can also do a full reset of the train if you want to. But I want to show you some other things first. So I'll just pop into B1 just for a little while, just to bring our speed back, just to maintain our speed going down here. We're going down a 1% gradient, which is relatively steep, 1.4. So you just use a little bit of braking when you need to, to maintain your speed using the power controller. 
Back into break one again. Now you won't hear a lot out of Vigilance if you're actively using the controls, but if you don't touch them for a while, Vigilance will go off and you'll have to acknowledge it. You acknowledge it using the Q key or the usual button for your PlayStation or Xbox. Right, we've gone into a 70 zone now. So let's just power on. In a little while as we approach LV Church, we're going to come up to a 40 mile an hour zone and there we'll get a warning from AWS that we're changing speed zones and I'm going to ignore it because I want to show you what happens when you do. I'm hoping before then by not touching any controls, Vigilance will also go off and I'll show you what to do with that. Just going to throttle back now. There's two situations where AWS or TPWS will stop you. If you go across some speed grids and you're going too fast, and on our right hand side there you just saw some grids, so if you're going too fast on the approach into Redditch, they will stop you. The other situation is where you fail to acknowledge a yellow signal or you fail to acknowledge a downward speed limit change. So we have a downward speed limit change here and there's the AWS magnet. I'm going to ignore it. Watch what happens. There we go, it's now braking us. It's gone into full emergency braking. You'll notice on the HUD the red interlock box has appeared. And if I try and acknowledge it, it'll be quiet it'll still stop us. So now we actually have to wait for a timer to run out. Now how do you know the timer's run out, you say? Well, pop it into break one and then come back to off. You just sit here in off now, you'll notice the driver's assist, which is a handy feature for new players, just turned up on the left there and is actually explaining the same thing to us. When the timer runs out, the brakes will release. So we'll just wait for that. You can acknowledge it before you stop, or you can acknowledge it after you stop, it doesn't really matter. And you acknowledge that with the Q key on keyboard, or the alert key on the rail driver, or I think it's, from memory, I think it's X on the Xbox controller, and I think, is it, well, it's either square or circle, one or the other on PlayStation. Alright, brakes have released, so we can drive again. Away we go. Now I'm just going to leave it in P2 because I don't want to get too fast because the next thing I want to show you is Vigilance. So I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to touch any controls because every time you touch a control you start the timer counting down again. And sooner or later Vigilance will go off and again I'm going to ignore it. Should trigger soon, I would imagine. There we go, there's vigilance. Now if I acknowledge that using Q or the usual controller buttons, nothing will happen. Um, it's now put the brakes on, so it's stopping us. I can acknowledge that now and it will continue to stop us so same thing back into B0 or B1 you can see the brakes are coming off and we can move again. So you don't have to wait a minute if vigilance stops you. Let's come into the next station now and we'll show you a station stop and we'll open up our doors using the panel in the cab here.
You have got emergency stop buttons if you need them. Yeah, you feel free to whack them if you need one. And that's also got a key on the keyboard and the controllers, the usual one. So, gentle braking. That was an AWS just letting us know there's a green signal up there. Now, we do have variable adhesion on this route, and it's weather dependent and surface dependent. And there are areas that warn you that they are a low adhesion zone. So you really need to get your route knowledge up for this one, and you need to have your wits about you. All right, let's bring that to a stop here. And we shall open our doors using the buttons. Now we've still got our key in there, that's why these buttons work. If you take your key out, the buttons will not work. Now you'll notice that's a very quick stop, and that's just how it is. The stopping times for this train are random. We can open our windows if we want to. We can lower our blinds, which makes driving a little more exciting. And, you know, we can lower this one as well if we want to. All right. Bit of horn action. And off we go again. Heading off to our next station. you notice we're in a twin, coming into a 25 zone now. Speed limits apply when they go down at the front of your train. And when they're going up, they apply at the back of your train. And it's up to you as a professional driver to stay within the limits. You notice we are coming up to a yellow on the HUD up there. Can't see that yet, so I'm not going to react to it until I can see it. I don't generally drive with most of the HUD turned on. I usually have my next stop on. And I'll often turn off the bottom one, the, this HUD. I'll normally drive with that one off after I've learnt the route, when I've learnt where my gradients are. You notice we're going uphill at the moment. And uh, as I learn, I'll also turn off the top right part of the HUD, which is signals and speeds. And you just try and follow the signage and your route knowledge, because sometimes the signage isn't enough. Sometimes you might see a thing that says 70 mile an hour, but you know from your route book that that curve has to be taken at 40. And that's called situational awareness, knowing where you are on the route and learning it. Now, in real life, drivers would probably spend, depending on the railway, anywhere between six and 18 months. So I'm just acknowledging the AWS warning of speed change there. And drivers would spend all that time learning before they're unleashed on their solo runs. So they'd be learning with someone else. But you can see on the HUD there's a yellow signal, it's fairly close. Um, it's either on the approach to or in the station, one or the other. I'd suggest it's on the approach to the station because it's before the station, just by the numbers. So because of our artificial route knowledge, which the HUD's giving us, we know that we've got a slow speed section coming up, so we'll start slowing down because you want to be doing 15 before you get there. We're acknowledging our speed change sign there, or our yellow signal. In this case, we're acknowledging the yellow signal. Just keep, don't need to brake terribly much because we're going uphill. A little bit of braking, just so we make sure we come down to 15 before we get to that sign. It is miles per hour. Most of the routes are a lot quicker than this. And you will need to maintain a little bit of power to keep yourself going, because we are going uphill. I'm using my rail driver to control the power controller, but you can use your normal keys on the keyboard or your normal controllers. Jump into the uh, mapping if you're not sure what they are. It's giving you a little bit more power there because I was losing a bit much. We have got a red signal coming up, which will be about looking at the numbers. It's just after the platform. 
That will probably clear as we come up to it. This route has signals where you're joining into other routes. The signal is by default red until you get there and then it will change and show that you've got a diverging route. If it stays red, there's a train. There's our AWS. Apologies for the quick cough there, I did mute it. Got our red signal coming up there. It's pretty close to the end of our stopping zone, so we're going to watch our speed a little bit coming up here. We are going uphill. Now, you don't have to go all the way up to the signal. You can stop anywhere in the green zone. Of course, you get more points the uh, closer you get to the end of the green zone. Let's just get our doors open again on this side. And you notice our signal has changed to green. Now we can lock our doors. I find myself the door opens and closes um, are quite quick on this route, particularly if you're running late like we are. And I feel sorry for the passengers, so I often sit there and make myself even later. Of course, a real driver would just go, ah, oh, don't worry about them. So that signal over there on the right is for the other line. So we're now going out onto the main line. We do have to maintain a slow speed through here, and we are slightly downhill, so watch the power. We may still need some, because the back of your train's still going uphill. Well, that's all about I wanted to show you in this tutorial. We'll be uh, jumping up in speed shortly. So we'll let our 323 drive off into the distance. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. If you found this tutorial useful, please give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel. And if you're really enthusiastic, you can show me some financial support by joining. Have a look at the perks. There are a few. Go to the highest level, you can even make a video with me. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Anyway, enjoy yourselves. I hope this has been useful for you. See you later.